All right, so we're talking about succession planning, passing the torch, if you will. What kind of steps are involved, Sam, in getting to that point? Well, the first and most important step is to assemble the team. Ah. And the team starts with the business owner. Too many times we see a business owner that wants to buy a succession plan or that a mm. business owner feels like, you know, I'll have my number two guy do this. Well, no. Unless there's actually buy-in by the top management, by the owner him or herself, a succession plan is doomed to fail. Why is that? Because if there isn't a true desire, if there isn't real buy-in to make the plan happen, to effectuate the plan, the plan will yeah. sit in somebody's drawer and just be an expensive set of useless papers. And when you say, get the team together, put the team together, is, is that the owner, the CPA, the attorney? Is it family members? It's basically all of the above. Yeah. As we just discussed, the most important person is the business owner. Sure. But then there's the team. And the team includes, of course, the lawyer to help uh, draft the documents that effectuate and reflect exactly what is uh, to happen. But also the successor is a very important player. Now, again, if that's an internal succession plan, that could be a family member. That could be a key employee. But if it's an external plan, well, you've got to get to know who is ultimately going to be the owner of the business. Well, like, and there's a lot of things involved in that in itself, isn't it? So what's the value of the company? How you right? Valuation is extremely yeah. important, and nobody is not interested in money. <laughs> However, um, also important is how and when the plan is going to take place. So again, we, we've the business owner the team, which includes lawyer. The team also includes accountant. These transactions are extremely um, financial sensitive and tax sensitive. You, it's necessary that your team for a proper succession plan include a capable CPA as well as a capable attorney. The other piece to a uh, good succession plan depends. And I would tell you that if someone is using a business coach I think that person ought to be involved in mm. a succession plan. If someone's using a family therapist, <laughs> it's sometimes possible that they should be involved. Whatever you do, make sure that those people who are involved in the plan not only have the abilities to make a positive contribution, but also can keep quiet about it. Mm. Because unless or until the plan actually goes into effect, the business owner probably doesn't want anyone to know much about it. That's right. Well, and, and especially because if there's competition out there, they may seize the day, so to speak. Well, they may seize the day, but if it's going to be an external succession mm -hmm. plan, meaning it's going to be sold, it's well, possible those, employees. those key employees uh -huh. may jump ship, and then you would really have much less to sell. The steps in uh, creating a succession plan or effectuating a succession plan are important but it's more important that they happen sort of in their own time. A succession plan is a little bit more like chili than it is like a salad. Uh, it's, it's much more a blended uh, event that happens all together. The most important thing is that there be clearly stated goals. And those clearly stated goals should be written. We tell our clients that if you don't have a writing which reflects it, the plan is merely an intention. Mm -hmm. It's merely a hope. Further, it's got to have some type of time frame connected to when the steps of the plan are going to be achieved. Again, we tell our clients that a plan without time frames is really just a dream. So, so when this is very important, I mean, if you're going to do this, you might as well make sure that it's A, written down, that it has a timeline so that you can follow along with that timeline. And are there steps in between from beginning to completion? There are. And a succession plan is never truly complete until the ownership of the business transfers. Now, that transfer, again, could be post-mortem. It could be through a will. It could be through some type of um, 
event that happens after the death of the owner, or it could occur during the lifetime of the owner. If it occurs during the lifetime of the owner, the, life, the owner has the opportunity perhaps to retire. The owner has the opportunity perhaps to recognize the uh, value of the business. The owner has the opportunity to have the um, self-fulfillment of, of a legacy being transferred during their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now, the documents that are necessary really depend on the transition. But the first thing that's really important is that the business do something of a self-audit. What are we? What are we and who are we? Um, it's important that you look to um, who the successors are, who the, what the strengths are, what the weaknesses are, what the competition is, so that you have a good feeling for exactly where you are and what you want to do. That then helps with the decision whether it's going to be internal or external. Um, second, there ought to be a written managerial plan for how to do this. Now, what I mean by that in part is that you've got to look at things like, is there an employee handbook? Are there policies and procedure manuals? The difference between a job and a business is a business has reproducible results. Reproducible results often come from the fact that they have policies and procedures that are followed and best if they are written. So that if someone gets hit by a beer truck, those policies and procedures don't go with the person. Speaking of the beer truck, I would imagine that part of this might want to include vendors, people that you're already doing business with? I would recommend that vendors not be involved unless or until you're well down the line. Right. Because again, vendors could get nervous that Sam is no longer going to be in the widget business and they decide that uh, Sam's son is not the person that they want to do business with. Well, it may turn out that Sam's son doesn't ultimately get mm. the business. Mm -hmm. So the point is that there is a timing and a, a procedure to all of this. The other thing that's important is to assemble the financial documents. You've got to know who you are and why you are. And what I mean by that is you've got to isolate things like, are you really vulnerable to three large customers? Do you have some type of uh, financial arrangement which could be expiring, like a franchise? Or do you have some type of line of credit that could ultimately get pulled, which would really impact your ability to continue in business? So a, a CPA, in part of this self-assessment, uh, is very important as is the lawyer, to make sure that there are things like employment agreements, to make sure that your employees are tied into the business. Um, Non-compete agreements, to make sure that if an employee leaves, they don't take all of your intellectual property with them. Um, I think that it's also interesting that most closely held businesses either don't know where their minute book is or have not seen it in a very long time. Minute book? What minute book? Again, I think it's important that you have documentation of what decisions have been made and who has made them, what directors' meetings have been held, what have been the results of those, what shareholder meetings have been uh, held, what are the results of those. And that clearly lays out what the direction has been. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will change, won't change in the future, but at least you've got to a past roadmap to look at. This brings us to a very important distinction, and that distinction is that minutes often reflect activities which are the business of the business mm -hmm. and not the business itself. Now, what I mean by that is minutes may reflect that a new contract has been reached with the University of Iowa to provide them with XYZ. Well, that's the business of the business. It's not the business itself. And one of the things that's very important if someone wants to engage in succession planning is to make sure that they're talking about the business. What is its competitive stage? What is its future? How is it going to achieve uh, greater markets? How is it going to move forward without the uh, key individual? There's lots of planning in all this. There's lots of planning involved in this, and fortunately there are lots of people who can help. What happens, Sam, if, if a business owner has already said, look, I, I think I've got a buyer, and that buyer is XYZ Corporation over here, going to buy me out. Uh, is it, 
if he or she has that inkling that there's already a buyer on the wings, is a succession plan still important? That is a succession plan. That is an external succession plan. That would be an opportunity for the owner of the business to realize the value of the business by selling it to someone else. When you engage in that type of sale, one of the things you've got to be careful on is how much you get in cash and how much you take in a promissory note. There's almost always a promissory note involved in closely held sales. And the real question is, how will that money be paid over the period of time? Hence, there's always a concern that the buyer needs to be successful for the seller to be successful. Absolutely. So there's always a relationship involved.